Good morning, Abundant Life Church Online. Thanks so much for joining us today. While I'm really excited to, uh, as we start this series, Equip for the Battle, that I'm going to be having a conversation with a, a good friend of mine, Joel Holtz. We're going to be looking at knowing your enemy. But just to give you a little uh, background of, of Joel, uh, he's married with three kids. He currently is a, a lead pastor at Calvary Church in Lindsay, Ontario. And uh, Joel loves to fish, loves to hunt. He would get along with many of you out there. He just loves the outdoors, loves that that kind of thing. But we've known each other for a long time. We were roommates in Bible college. We've kind of been in and out of each other's lives over the past years. We've done ministry together. Uh, we attended each other's weddings. We we know each other really well. He's a he's a solid guy. He's a smart guy. I call him Professor Joel, and I, I believe you're really going to enjoy today's conversation. So let's just jump into this conversation with my good friend, Joel Holtz, as we, as we look at this topic, Knowing Your Enemy. Let me just read Ephesians chapter 6. Going to be looking at verses 10 to 18. Obviously, we're going to go outside of that a little bit, but uh, that's kind of our main context. And, and for all you NIV fans... This one's for you today. So here we go. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Bam. So obviously we know that Ephesians was written by Paul because basically the whole New Testament was, was Paul. 
But uh, Joel, if you could kind of give us a little context of who is Paul writing to and, and the kind of where was the church at Ephesus in, in all of this? Can you give us a little background on, on this? Yeah, man. Hey, and uh, I just want to say way to go, Pastor Dan, for addressing kind of a much needed mm-hmm. conversation. You know, lots of talk in the world today about, you know, what's evil and what's not. And uh, like when you read that verse there, what just came to my mind again was Paul is writing this so that they can resist, you know, the evil day or resist, yeah. you know, in the evil day. And some of us would be like, okay, just tell me, Pastor, when that evil day is going to happen so that I can resist, right? Yeah, that's right. So this is great, uh, Dan, because it for them, I think the original audience listening to Paul, reading yep. this, you know, they were living in a time that evil, that evil day could be that day. Yes. The next day. That's right. Um, because they were, were facing things that we tend to not face in this sense. Right. Uh, we know that, you know, Ephesus, this ancient city, was really kind of a metropolis city. Uh, it was, you know, had maybe 250,000 people living it. Yep. So lots of people there. It was one of three major cities in Asia Minor. It's on kind of the West Coast um, where present day Turkey is. So it's a major port for, you know, travel. It was uh, deemed the first landing place, you know, for travelers coming into Asia Minor. And it was a hustling, bustling city. You know, if, if we were to maybe think in terms of, you know, the West Coast in our nation, you know, we could be thinking Vancouver-like, you know, set up. So lots of people, busy, lots of foreigners. And, and with that came... Uh, a lot of pagan gods and, and pagan idols. And we know in Ephesus that one of the seven wonders of the world was there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, this, this temple to Artemis, which is, uh, you know, a Greek goddess, or in Latin, it would be Diana, right? Like this thing, you, you I don't know, Dan, if, 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 if we would not be able to see this thing living in Ephesus, like yeah. this thing was close to a hundred thousand square feet at the foundation. Wow. That's, that's gigantic. Like, okay. You're a football guy, right? Yes. Two football fields. Wow. That's like, <laughs> that's massive. This is huge. It's huge. It, it I think over 400 feet long, 200 feet wide and yep. 50 feet five feet high, maybe. Wow. So this massive thing is there erected to a, a pagan, you know, deity, thousands upon thousands of people are coming mm-hmm. to Ephesus for this reason. Yeah. To you know, offer sacrifices, be part of that cult. Right. Yes. Um, and it was a big money industry, right? Like we saw yeah. what Paul, Paul caused at ruckus. Yeah in acts because of because of dealing with some of those you know idolatrous powers but but anyhow um just and he liked to do that didn't he oh yeah yeah he was never shy shy to uh kind of be bold and stuff but uh fun to hang out with them like man what a what a guy the adventures i don't know about the prison stuff maybe i wouldn't <laughs> yeah we don't like the suffering aspect of it but no. we like the others but yeah 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 so uh but yeah, so Dan, I think it was it's good to to remind ourselves of kind of the ancient audience. Yes. What they were living in. And but um there were other pagan temples. And I think, you know, Rome was was uh, enforcing emperor worship yes. at that time. And so um I think Ephesus had four and and Rome counted it an honor to allow the city to build right a temple yes so ephesus was granted that honor four times wow so there's these you know emperor temples and you know uh i'm of the opinion that probably followers of jesus were put to the test they they could be asked to at any given moment offer sacrifices right do that so it was a real challenge living in the ancient world because you know it was surrounded by 
kind of evil. And uh, I think understanding that all the occultic all activity in, you know, the ancient world was very, very real. And so, yeah, I think Paul is writing to try to help the believers do what you're doing. Talk about standing. Yeah. And resisting, right? Yeah. So kind of what, what do you think would be, if we were to put that in modern day terms, that maybe if the church of Ephesus was today, what would they be dealing with? What would maybe be some of those um, temples or things that Paul was referring to today? Yeah. Well, I think when you begin to understand a little bit of who the, you know, who our enemy is. Yes. And what he does. Yes. I think that kind of helps us maybe see where these aspects fit into our lives right yeah um you know so in the letter you know you just read the verse where he he says you know he he refers to satan as the evil one yes right and then we have these pauline concepts or these pauline terms that he uses to describe um you know these 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 powers so he's got you know rulers principalities authorities uh some refer to you know the of this world yeah some refer to you know only the spiritual forces and so you know at times paul uses these concepts and they're somewhat unique to him and 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 they're in his other letters too but we see right. kind of what he's talking here so most likely he's talking about kind of these spiritual forces that exist that are working in opposition to god right that they're there and yep. you know they're they're in the world they're a, 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 a part of life part of living in the world now and so we are to start we we kind of battle against that but you know it's helpful okay so you know truth de declaration right you and i you know uh, we were just talking off camera you know one of the challenges that we have dan pastoring in the charismatic sort of tradition right yep you bring up spiritual warfare oh boy <laughs> like everybody's all over the map that's right? true and uh and this really challenging so i give you credit to do it because i think you're gonna you're, you're approaching it in a real thoughtful way yes um because you know everybody's got stories of what that looks like and and oftentimes it's you know really loud and people are just shouting and you know yeah. we're, we're we're actually you know doing business and kind of violent in a sense yeah. right right um so it's it's really good to help us to keep in mind that we're we're talking about created powers mm. you know so these things that's, have a limit that's good created um powers. yeah and again hey key verse right paul for paul people uh, Colossians reminds us everything he uses the terminology again, uh, whether rulers, you know, thrones, dominions, authorities, they've all been created um, by Jesus, you know, through him. So right. these are created, created powers uh, working, you know, kind of opposition to the world, I think, to kind of lead us uh, astray and I think present you know, a counterfeit way of life or a counterfeit um, power, a false power, false hope, false uh, happiness, um, right. you know, and it sort of runs along those lines, I think. Yes. I think it's, I like what he says too. He says, our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Right. In our social media saturated world, it seems like anytime anybody disagrees with you, it's like, ah, I'm yeah. against you. And it's, but Paul is trying to say, why are you so busy struggling against the wrong things? This is what you should really be, be, be concerned about. And I think sometimes we take it too lightly, um, mm. who our enemy is, but could you just kind of talk a little bit about who, who is this? for those that maybe don't understand these concepts uh like powers of this dark world spiritual forces of evil like if you're maybe some people are watching this for the first time going oh i'm out okay yeah whoa, whoa, what's this the or maybe, crazies are out <laughs> yeah or maybe some people are like "Ooh, i like this 
Like, right. Obviously, we we would be naive to think that we don't have an enemy. I think it's right. pretty clear if you read the Bible, there there is an enemy that opposes us. Jesus speaks it. Paul talks about it. So who is this this enemy? Who is Paul talking about with mm. some of these um, concepts that Paul is talking about? Right. Well, I think C.S. Lewis said that there's two equal dangers mm. when we're talking about, you know, evil. And I think C.S. Lewis would say Satan. Yeah. One is to just believe he does not exist. Right. That is not there. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's an error. Yeah. And the other error is to have an unhealthy interest in it. Okay. Yeah. That's I think good. he's. Yeah. So I, I found that helpful. So, right, like you, we want to be biblical. And I think that there's there's imagery here referring to the one who opposes the things of God in the world. Yes. You know, he's referred to as Satan. Yes. Uh, the serpent, right? Eden imagery. Yes. Um, the dragon imagery in Revelation. That's right. Yep. Okay. He, uh, Paul gives, um, you know, the ruler of the air or power of the air. Uh, so I think we're dealing with Satan. He is a created being. Yep. Um, and he has the ability to work and oppose the things of God here in the world. Yep. But like we said before, he is a created being. And he, I don't think he's actually on equal with God at all. No. Uh, I think that's a bit of a, you know, I think we need to kind of get that out of our heads too. Mm. Now, you know, okay, so we grew up and and God bless his soul, you know, Carmen, the the musician guy just recently passed away, right? Impacted. Okay, so we, you know, Jesus and the devil going round for round in the in the ring, right? The, wasn't it called the champion? <laughs> yeah. Right. I watched that. Oh yeah. But I don't think that's true, right? I don't no. and I you know, I, okay, I'm not trashing it. I guess no, I sort no. of am, but uh we have to somewhat remember that as a created being, yes. um, he's not on equal standing at all with, right. with God. Yeah. There was some creative licensing there, I think. Right. And, yeah. With, yeah. with the spirit, of course. Right. It's <laughs> for a great drama though, doesn't it? Like yeah. I remember being a part of the drama, the champion. It's like, yeah. 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 We all want to kick the devil's butt. Right. You sure. know? Like, <laughs> so, um, but anyhow, I think we're, we're, you know, Lucifer, that's who we would refer to him before he fell. He'd be more like online with, with Michael, in my opinion. Yeah. So anyways, created Michael, being. For those that maybe are just, I know that me and you are like, yeah, we know, but who, who's, sure. when you refer to Michael, who's that? Yeah. So in scripture, we see Archangel Michael showing up. He's kind of, he's kind of associated with um, battle um he comes to you know he's the the leader of the hosts of heaven in the sense yeah. where he wages war against the other spirit beings yeah and then gabriel shows up as a another a, we would say mighty angel archangel he yep. seems to be more of a communicator yes revealing things so we, we see that in scripture um right. angels showing up and those those two michael and gabriel probably are given names um, have a specific role seem to be mentioned and that would be uh, where I would place Lucifer in that regard yes. probably yeah. now, Lucifer was a I know he was a created being but we call him a fallen angel so right it's very easy to see that comparison yeah absolutely yeah yeah so I think getting back to kind of what he does now yeah again people are all over the, the, the map with this but oh. I think what we're seeing with Paul and being true to, to your study in Ephesians, he presents um, Satan as one who is all about deception. Okay. That's what he does. He, uh, chapter five, verse six, it's all about a counterfeit thing. He is deceiving, yes. trying to deceive people here trying to lead them astray, give them a false God in a sense. Yes. Um, a false happiness. Yes. Like the level of debauchery, there's a word for you, for the ancient world, Dan, is like, 
okay, so we don't have to combat going past, you know, pagan temples today where, you know, there was, you know, temple prostitution being offered to anybody. And so oftentimes these types of temples intertwined that, you know, sexual immorality. Yes. You know, so we don't have that in the sense that, you know, you and I going to work, you know, we're not going to walk by the temple dedicated to, right? Yes. And, and that's, that was real life for these people. Right. right. So all of these other, you know, temples had other, you know, deities and gods associated to, to give you happiness, to give you love, to give you babies, to give you, you know, all that stuff. Yes. And it was all a deception to try to lead people away from Jesus. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah. Cause he, he sets it up when you read the letter, like you're doing, you're studying it, you're seeing Paul contrast living with Jesus, you know, with the spirit. And then there's not living with the flesh or giving, you know, over to this, uh, you know, other way which he is saying is the way of, you know, of Satan. And uh, I think that's the devil's main objective. And, and then secondly, we have to be careful because Paul says the devil, you know, the the evil powers can gain a foothold. Right. Right. That classic, we don't want to give the devil a foothold. Right. So, (laughs) you know, I grew up in a time when, uh, you know, taken out of context, right? In a sense where, you know, you get the fear in you that, yeah. oh, you don't want to, you can't oh. go to play pool, right? Downtown. Right? Yeah. Sermon so we, after sermon. Right. Don't even give him a foothold. That's right. So we missed it a little bit, you know, yeah. in our growing up years as Pentecostals. But, um, but the idea is true. I think that yeah. Paul is saying, look, we need to be careful. For sure. There is someone who, you know, he's alluded to an angel of light. He, he, yeah. He's seeking to devour people. That 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 is true. And he wants yeah. to gain a foothold. So we have to be careful not yeah. to give access. And I think Paul helps us understand um, in positive ways what our response should be yes. to this battle we kind of find ourselves in, right? And yeah. I, I think um, I like too that, um, and like we kind of maybe we could talk a little bit about this, but uh, you know we we've kind of talked a little bit about who he is, what he was a created being. He's kind of on this level of Michael, the the archangel. Um, what he's trying to do, he's he's totally trying to just take us, pull us away, counterfeit. Um, us away from what God wants, but I, I like this idea that um, to take a stand against the devil's schemes. Let's maybe let's let's just look at that for a little bit. What what do you think Paul is talking about? Like taking a a stand. We've we've got a little bit of a history of the church in Ephesus and what they were dealing with. So obviously that sounds like you know like you know like they say make your mark in the sand and like take a stand, you know, in, in battle, taking a stand is like, you're, you're ready to go. But is that what he's talking about? Is he saying, let's rush into battle or what, what does he, he mean by take a stand? Right. Well, <clears throat> I, I don't think me personally, I don't think mm-hmm. Paul is, is wanting any of us to put on like the flannel graph armor of God stuff that we watched in Sunday school and, and run around looking for demons under the rocks. And, you know, I don't think he's actually wanting he's us. Our, remember that song? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> right. I don't think he wants, but he uses these concepts that I think are helpful. And he talks about being light. Yeah or walking with the spirit. Mm. Um, So when you look at, you know, what Paul is saying, uh, he's talking about walking in the light. Now, I like that. I like to walk and, you know, it's good to get out and walk. Yes. You know, as you're walking around cap up there, your members of your congregation are out walking. That's good for us. Health Canada saying get out and walk. Okay, so here we go. Now let's walk. And Paul is saying, 
when you're walking, you know, yeah. do it in the light. Mm -hmm. And here's what I love, right? He, he gives these really cool uh, summary of what walking in the light looks like. Yeah. And he says, he says, okay, right. We don't want to grieve the Holy spirit. Okay. Right. Right. We want to do that. Yep. So let all bitterness, anger, wrath, insult, slander. He says, wow. let all of that be removed from you. Wow. Along with all wickedness. <laughs> okay. Let's just, he's just dealing with everything. Oh, oh, so we got some internal things. And I, I think that's the focus, right? Yeah. Yes. Paul says, okay, so this is where we need to deal with. All right. Yeah. Um, he, he goes on, he says, be, be kind, compassionate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Forgiving one another. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. whoa. Now it's getting personal. <laughs> now I read a book years ago. Uh, one of his good ones, John Bevere. The bait of Satan. Oh, yes. Right. And I think that's true. I think that there is their unforgiveness can be a real issue. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So this is what he's taught. This is what Paul's talking about. Yeah. Uh, walking in the light. We're being kind, kind, compassionate, forgiving one another. He says, speak that's the truth in love. Ooh. You know, walking in love. This you is going to affect social media a little bit. Oh, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> but you nailed it right on the head there it's so true eh? we we just need to put some filters on ourselves yes. when we come to some of the stuff we post and you know absolutely yeah yeah but i think i think you're seeing that um pastor like uh paul is saying these are things we need to do you know be filled with the spirit he says yes like and uh like chapter, what is it? Chapter six. He's talking about submitting to one another. Yes. Like we, we take that out of context at times. And, but the whole point is that we are to live submissive lives, mm. you know, children and parents as spouses, yeah. like you and I are married. We, we are to love them as Christ loved the church. Well, he gave himself up for her. All right, man, we're giving yeah. ourselves up for our wives, right? Well, like no that's, pressure there, eh? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Turn this guy off, right? Sure. Just love, love your wife like Jesus loves the church. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Right. Yeah. So I think that helps. And I think the verse you just read, he he Paul is building to this point, and and yes. it's, a, it's a great summary that you just read. He says, finally, okay. Well, after saying all of that, right? If you can get, oh, if we can get through all of that, it's you like know, Yes, in a letter, right? There's like yeah. a little bit more to say. It's like, okay, you know, well, finally, once we do all that, yeah, be strengthened mm. by the Lord. Wow. Powerful. So I think for Paul, the emphasis for the Ephesians, for believers yeah. today, for you and me. Yes. I think we need to be more concerned about walking in the light. Because his hope, our hope as pastors, believers, is that everywhere we go, right, right, we got we got the light with us. We're gonna be walking in it. Like I like flashlights, and if I was to have a flashlight, I'd want it like a million candle power, you know, times ten, right? And but that's the point, right? We're yeah. the more people walking in the light pushes the darkness, wow. expels the darkness. So good. It's so good. And I think that's what he wants. I think that's the point. Yeah. And even like the, like my, my young boys, you know, we go hiking at night while well, they want to bring a flashlight. Right. And the more flashlights we have, the, the cooler the experience, but the more we can see. And man, that's so good. That's it. That's so good. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, this is, this has been a great, conversation already uh, and this is just this is just week one this yeah. is um but i i like what you were talking about that it kind of is like an, an internal thing because that's i named it equip for the battle but i more was mm. looking at it from each individual almost like we kind of were talking a little bit um before this about this is a message to preach into the mirror 
we got to read this into the mirror. This isn't a William Wallace storm the battlefield. This is a let's look gut check time. Look at each one of us. And and so for this series, I, I really wanted to dive in uh, just to start with knowing who our enemy is, what we're up against. And then we're going to kind of go on from there. But this has been great. Do you have any closing thoughts, anything you want to just hit us with and go, man, like this is like all the people that like to journal, like, come on, this is your time. <laughs> journal it up. Well, listen, I, I just want to encourage you. We're both pastoring in Pentecostal contexts. And yes. So I think if there's one thing that we probably ought to get back to more is is walking with the spirit. Mm. Paul talks a lot about it. And sometimes people are hard on Paul saying that, well, why doesn't he talk more about, you know, the initial evidence and that sort of stuff. Yes. But Paul was talking to spirit baptized believers. Right. I'm of that opinion. He, he didn't have to deal with it in his letters because they had already been, they've already received yes. the spirit. Yes. So he's encouraging them to walk with the spirit. And I love the imagery that, um, a writer wrote, I, I can't remember who, but the vision for us as people of the spirit is that we are now to be a dynamic force, you know, in the world to win the world. And the idea is that we now have a church that rides on the wind of God's spirit. Yeah. So I think that's so important. And as we do that, I believe we will be able to not only, um, you know, stand and resist, but we can also pro expose the darkness, push it back, bring the light, bring the newness of God, yes. his agenda here on earth via the spirit. Wow. Yeah. That's great. Great, man. This has been a, a fun conversation. Joel, anytime I'm talking with you, I, I know I, I call you professor Joel, like you, <laughs> you, you, you have an intellect and, and we need more intellectual minds in Pentecostal. Uh, I think it's great that you're doing this. So you like to read. I know you're a reader. I know that bookcase, you probably read all those books like 10 times. Uh, well, any, not 10. <laughs> <laughs> any, any books that you could recommend for those that maybe want to dig in a little bit deeper? Obviously, please read the Bible. That's probably yeah. a good book to read. <laughs> I think we both could say that. But is there any books that you that you can recommend to, to anybody? Yeah, well, thanks for your compliments, Dan. I appreciate that. Um, I'm a reader because I find that God speaks to me through books. Mm. Um, so I do read a lot. Yes. This is a really good one I'll recommend. It's a little bit heavy, but I think people can understand it. It's, it's called Cleansing the Cosmos okay. by E. Janet Warren. So she has a, a really good, really good, I think, summary of you know, what's going on in the world. She talks obviously about some of the things that we've talked about. She actually helps people understand a little bit more in, in you know, better ways. Yeah. So she's a good one. Um, one of our Bible college professors wrote a commentary on Ephesians, Luch Lombardi. Luch, yeah. New Humanity, you know him. Yes. That's yeah. a really good one. Like I, I was impressed. It's short. Like it's, if you want to kind of read Ephesians. It's, it's really a commentary on Ephesians. So that's some good stuff there too, you know? Good. Yeah. So yeah, our Bible's good, but I, I find God speaks to me through books. So I, I read this, I read the Bible. I've got the Bible open when I'm usually reading books because I'm yeah. checking and I'm like, Oh wow, I didn't see that before. And oh, yeah. that's good. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Awesome. It's always, yeah. I, I love reading too. I've really gotten into it recently. So great. Good. Now yourself, you're, you are new on the, you've written your own book. Uh, yeah. I just want to give you a couple of minutes to just plug it. Let us know where you can find it. What is it about? I'm right. sure the title alone is just going to like, people are going to be like, whoa, who is this guy? Let's get him off, right? <laughs> yeah, well, thanks, man. I appreciate that. And I did. I took, uh, the, everybody's been doing different things during the lockdown. So one of the things that I did is I took it upon myself to write my very first book. And I did. And the title is Hello, Jesus, Goodbye, Church. Wow. And uh, it's it's a short book. It's, yeah. you know, just over 60 pages. Um, and I really wrote it because I just finished my very last course in my master's program. 
It was on the Gospel of John. And I really thanked my professor in the book because he helped me understand Jesus better wow. and the Gospel of John better. So it is sort of a behind the scenes look at the Gospel of John, maybe why he's writing, you know, what he's writing. Yes. And I think it helps us. And I'm, and I'm kind of, you know, percolating some things too. It helps us today in amidst a, you know, a culture similar to Ephesus, right? There's different multi-faith, right? We're multinational, you know, culture. How do we live for Jesus? What is the way? Yeah. And that's kind of an emphasis I take is finding the way of yeah. Jesus. So if you want it, it's there. It's on Amazon, Kindle, paperback. You can look for it on amazon.ca. And yeah, thanks for letting me share that. Absolutely. I've, I've read it myself. I read it on Kindle. It was a great read. I really appreciate it. And I, I know we're great friends, so it's not a biased thing. I really enjoyed reading the book. So thanks for for writing that you have another book coming out yeah hopefully let's get yeah. to work on it yeah <laughs> well all good things come in threes right like we yeah. all like trilogies we all have our favorite trilogy so yeah i'm gonna try to get something going soon <laughs> super well joel this has been an absolute blast i'm always i love dialoguing with you having conversation we've we've done this many many times over the years and i thank you so much for for speaking into the people at, at Abundant Life Church. And I really hope that they were encouraged and learned something new today about who the enemy is. And, mm -hmm. and if they like it, I hope they share it with a ton of people. But uh, can I just pray with you before we go? Yeah, man. Some people watching that this might be like brand new information. Yeah. And we want to just, it's that what I like what you said about C.S. Lewis is that we don't, say he doesn't exist, but we don't have an unhealthy uh, love of him. Mm. Got to find that balance. But all right, let me, let's just pray together if you would yeah. mind. Yeah. God, just thank you for this time when we could chat. Thank you for this conversation. Lord, I pray you would just bless Pastor Joel at his church and his family, that you would watch over them, help him as he he's ministering to his church in Lindsay. And Lord, I just pray for anybody that's watching that that they would have learned something new as they, as we talked about who our enemy is and knowing who he is, but, mm -hmm. but knowing that we can take a stand and that we need to be careful and watch out, but also that we would walk in the light, that we would shine that big flashlight everywhere we go. And that mm -hmm. I pray that more and more people would shine those flashlights so that we can illuminate light into the darkness, because there are so many people out there that need to hear hope. They need to see light. They need to know Jesus. So I pray for those that, that maybe today were like, I don't think he exists, but they would be aware of his existence, but that we wouldn't have an unhealthy love of the enemy. Yeah. And I just thank you for what you're teaching us. Continue to speak to us throughout this, the rest of this month, I pray in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Well, thank you, my friend. This has been fun. I hope that you have a, just a fantastic day. You too, brother. Thanks for joining. Yeah. At this time now, the band is going to come and lead us in this worship song called Freedom.
Thanks so much, band, for leading us in that song, Freedom. I love that part in the song where the Spirit of the Lord is there is freedom. And as, as Joel and I talked about walking in the Spirit, may you walk in the Spirit this week. Thanks also to my good buddy, Joel Holtz, for joining in the conversation. And uh, I can't wait to see you guys. It's going to be real soon. And just thanks so much for joining us online. Please join us tonight. Uh, at 6 p.m. for a Refresh Prayer Night live on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. And I hope you have a great night. I'll see you tonight. Bye for now. Oh, oh, oh.